Well, my name's Angela Lane, and um, I've just got three sheep, which I enjoy keeping and looking after and spinning the wool. This is where I live, in this little tiny cottage in a very rural lane in the middle of Somerset, which is a lovely spot, beautiful, just under the hill. And, um, but also quite near Glastonbury, Wells and Shepton. So it's a pretty good situation to be in. Yeah, and so um, when you say uh, spin, you spin the wool from your own sheep, how does that yes, work? Yes, yeah. Well, they're shorn, um, and then I just spin the wool straight as it's shorn, straight from a lump of fleece, because uh, lots of people use the the um, carding things and make roll lags, and I don't know, they probably make it a lot finer, but I, I don't like doing that. I don't like them because they're spiky and hard and sharp. And I like just to have a big lump of soft, squishy wool. And, and when it's just been shorn, they're absolutely full of lanolin. And it, they, it, the, the fibres just come away beautifully and it just spins up lovely. And your hands are all soft because the lanolin, of course, has gone into your hands with the spinning. It's really lovely. And the smell, don't underestimate the smell. That's fabulous. Love it. <laughs> <laughs> so do you, what do you do it then? Is it kind of a personal thing just for the fun of it? Or? Yes, I think so. Well, my family were farming for five generations in the village, about a couple of miles from here. And I think I just love the connection with the land and the animals. I like having animals to look after. And it's not, they're not like dogs. You don't have to take them for walks. They don't care if you're late back, you know. You just have to check them every day and feed them. And they don't require a lot of care, but the little bit of care they do require is very important that they have, which they do. Mine are really spoiled brats, my sheep. <laughs> also, you mentioned, uh, you said that it was just three sheep. Does it, uh, yes. If you've got this five-generation farming family, did you grow up on a, on a bigger farm? Then? Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. Much, yes. And we had milking cows and um, we had some pigs and not many sheep. It was a dairy, really. But as the generations have gone on, it got shrunk down and shrunk down, and gradually we left without any farm. But I've got a paddock now, which, you know, it's just nice to have that natural link with the natural world. What was that growing up with a family on a farm in Somerset? What was it like? Yeah. Oh, lovely. I mean, I didn't know any other way of growing up, so, you know, it, it was just great. I mean, there's lots of freedom. And lots of local village children, we used to sort of, sort of go up over the hill in a group to pick um, bluebells and, and primroses and flowers and just have a lovely day and parents used to just say make sure you're home before dark and that was it you know there was no fear of children wandering about in the fields and uh, well we just did and it, it was just lovely I, it, I think it's probably nicer being a child then than perhaps it is now with all, all the care and they're not allowed out of adult sight for too long because it's you know parents love their children and it's risky what kind of benefits do you think there are to um, having grown up in that environment to the kind of the, the way you think now? Well, I just think it's just a loving the natural world, really, and having animals and feeling them moving and touching them, you know, and just having something else to care for, I suppose, and, and seeing and the seasons as well mean a lot. They used to mean a lot, and they still do to me, and I expect they do to everybody who grew up in the country. The different seasons are just great. I think, I suppose, I don't know, because I've never lived in a city, but I suppose you're just a bit removed from all that. Have you ever spent much time in a city? And how no, have you got on? no, I haven't. No, no. I did work in London for a little while, and actually I do love London. I love the busyness of it, and lots of things to do, and the art galleries and stuff, and there's lots of things to see, and, and also visiting places where um, famous people have lived, and going to sort of Highgate Cemetery and seeing where people were buried. I just love doing that. Yeah, I do. I, well, I don't know. I might. I might be able to, but um, I'm quite happy where I am, so I wouldn't rush to. But if I had circumstances changed and I had to, I think I could adapt to it. And so these three sheep, have they all got names? Oh, yes. Yes, they have. Um, the big one is called Mo. She was a rescue from people down the road arrived here at a cottage and they had a lawn with and they brought two sheep and I could see they hadn't got much grass and I had too much grass for my two then so I I went down and I said would you like to put your sheep up with mine and they said oh yes we'd love to do that so they did 
but unfortunately one of them put, put her leg down a badger hole I think is what must have happened broke her leg so she had to go which was a shame but we've still got the other one and she's called Mo because she's there to mow the ground that's what she for, for mow the grass that's why she's called Mo but my two I bought my two from a lady in Odcombe down near Yeovil and they were born the year when all the lambs were christened with the with the initial J so that she knew which year they were, you know, because she, she was naming them through the alphabet. But that's not a standard sheet thing then? It's no, just her doing it. Yeah, it was her doing it. Well, I presume so, yeah. yeah. So, so those two, one's called Jingles and one's called Jewel, because it's two J's, you see, because they were the J year. <laughs> that, are they more like pets than uh, kind of... Well, not really, because the two, the Jingles and Jewel are um, primitive breed. They're they're Shetlands, and um, so they're a bit scatty, really, and you'd have to spend a lot of time with them. What, what other kind of breeds of sheep are there when you say primitive? There's well, they're rare breeds then, but actually they're not rare anymore because lots of people have Shetland sheep, and I had them first from choice because the fleece is so nice to spin. When I was, you know, learning to spin, I needed something that was going to supply me with a fleece that was going to be easy rather than one that was going to be a bit tricky. So that's how I came with those two. And, but I was going to go for Portland until I discovered that the Portland sheep were twice the price of Shetland. And I thought, oh, I think I can manage a Shetland. <laughs> How, is it expensive buying sheep? Um, it, can, well, yeah, it can be, I suppose, because when I bought mine, I think they were, were they £50 each. But the Portland were 100 or 95 or something. So I thought, well, I'll just learn to, to deal with the Shetland because they're cheaper. <laughs> but they're, they're, they're all right if they're primitive. It was primitive breed, yeah. Yes, well, primitive or rare breed, yeah, yeah. And and the thing of it is, you can't fool them like you can the commercial breeds, because if I take a bucket of food out, bucket of nuts, Mo, who is a commercial breed, she'll come running for the nuts and she'll follow me anywhere with this bucket. But my two, the primitive ones, are thinking, Mother's got a bucket of nuts. She's got some plan for us, and I don't think we want to have anything to do with it. So they have to be tempted much more carefully because they'll think, you see. But Mo doesn't think. She just follows the buckets. Great. What, what kind of things are they usually worried of? Is it kind of a... Uh, I mean, Anything that's not... It's what actually happens to them every day. I mean, everything. they're worried about everything except being in the field on their own, quietly grazing. Anything else puts the wind up them. And so when you get them shorn as well, then it's, uh, or sheared, I should say, really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When yeah. you get them sheared, uh, does someone else come around to do that? Then? Yeah, they do, except when there was foot and mouth, nobody would touch anybody else's sheep. So uh, well, I did them with, my children came and we had some scissors and we did them with the scissors. And they looked great. We made a really good job of it. But it did take a long time. It yeah. took about an hour to do each one. And the ch my children said to me, we're not doing that again, Mother. <laughs> Next time you get somebody in to shear them. <laughs> But I loved it. I would love to have done it again. But um, it did take a long time. It's a bit, And the sheep got a bit fed up with it as well. Did foot and mouth affect you even though you've just got a few sheep then? Oh, yes, it would do. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Everybody who had one sheep was, you know, vulnerable. What was that like going through that? What? Going through what? The foot and mouth? Yeah. That. Well, of course, it didn't hit us here, thankfully. I mean, it, I, it must have got quite near. I don't know exactly how near it got, but, but we didn't get it here. So we were lucky. But, but everybody was afraid, you know, of going on other people's land or having anything to do with other people's sheep. It was just too risky. So nobody did, and nobody, nobody would shear them that year. So we did it. Yeah. Because they had to, somehow we had to get the wool off. I mean, is there because they were so hot. Do you have to have kind of like a? Do you have a local vet then that sees to them if those? I mean, what illnesses can sheep get? I know they kind of get maggots and. The, uh, well, they can, but yeah. generally speaking, it's it's neglect that causes that. Because if you just keep them clean and you, you can get some stuff to just give them a bit of a spray along their backs and round the tail, and they don't then they don't get the fly pitch on them. So you know they're just generally looked after like you would any animal keeping it in a good healthy state then there's not much to fear really I and mean, so in terms of the produce you get from them you get uh, you get the wool from them like how how regular is that and how much once a year but you get a vast lot of fleece from each sheep a lot of fleece i mean it would take me a long time to spin up a whole fleece it'd take ages and it's how much could you make from like uh, a year's fleece then oh several jumpers i would think 
Yeah, she would. Mm. And what would you tend to make? What would I make? Yeah. I've knitted a few cardigans, but um, I, I often sell the the fleece when I've spun it up and washed it and made it into a thing like, you know, a hank. People buy it, seem to like to buy that. And then because my my wool is is quite obviously not commercial wool because I don't use the carders. Um, it's it's slightly not not as smooth and not as fine, although it's perfectly all right to knit with. But you wouldn't mistake it for some manufactured wool. <laughs> you wouldn't. It's obviously hand stuff. Does it sell for a lot more because you can tell that it's kind no, of well? No, it doesn't sell for much really. But it's just quite fun to pass it on that way. And also, you can't fill the house up with it, so you have to keep it moving. So it's quite good to do that. Yeah. And I don't get much time for for knitting things, really. Yeah. Because um, I'm always doing something else. I seem to have so many things to do. Yeah. I mean, so could you talk to us about the, the process for um, how the spinning wheel works? Um... Well, I don't really know how it works, actually. I just know my foot goes up and down, up and down, and this big wheel goes round, and then the small wheel goes round, and and it just draws on the fleece. from As you pull it out, as you pull the fleece out, it just draws it on in. But, I mean, as far as explaining how it works, I couldn't do that. You could, you just have to look at it and see how it works, because I'm not... That, that's it's a bit too clever for me, really. Technical, that is. But it does work, and you get something out the other end. Of oh, it. yes. Oh, yes. Yeah, it does work. <laughs> Otherwise, you'd be wasting your time, wouldn't you? Yeah. How, how long have you had the sheep, then? Um, 20 years. Well, not the same sheep, but I've always got three, four, or five sheep um, for the last 20 years. And when I lose one, I usually find another one or another two. You can't keep one sheep. You have to have at least two. They they get very distressed on their own because they're flock creatures. They they need the company. Yeah. So and if anything happens to one of mine, I shall just go in search of a couple more. So yeah. I'd hate to be without them. Yeah. And this um you from growing up on a farm like why why did that um kind of come to an end then? And have you got brothers and sisters that also? Uh... Um. Well, I think farming got to be quite difficult to make money with, really, and my parents sort of abandoned the project and it just, you know, just disappeared over the hill like lots of things do, really, yeah. What, so, what did you find yourself doing for a living after the, the farm had kind of gone? Well, I looked after children for a while, after, and then I got married, and then I looked after my own children. Then I came here and... Um, look after the sheep so does it seem a bit sad that you've almost got like a kind of mini farm here then i guess with the sheep. well yeah except it's only sheep really but that's that satisfies me it's enough it's okay i mean i'd have hens but there's foxes everywhere here so you'd have to keep them so penned in that i i wouldn't it wouldn't be the quality of life that i'd want to give them so i don't have hens but also for your children, does it seem like as the sixth generation, they're not getting the same experience? No, they're not well? getting the same experience at all. But they don't seem to, they seem to, you know, they get on with their life. This is what people do, isn't it? They, they don't spend their time looking back and thinking, oh, if only, you just go forward to the next thing. Uh, in terms of the way the world's kind of changing, though, because obviously the, the, this kind of, uh, the farm's changed and everything, how do you feel about that? About well, that, I think it's very out. sad that there's so few farms now because there used to be so many small farms. And and it was lovely, really, this complex of small farms and all the farming families knowing each other. But now you've got just a few big farms. I mean, lots, so many of the small farms have just gone and been swallowed up by the big farms. This is what's happened. And let's just talk a bit about your, uh, your parents and growing up in that farm life. Would they be up early every morning then? And Oh yes, yeah, yeah. Go out and milk the cows. I used to do that. Yeah. And then the attitude that that's kind of brought in you in terms of kind of uh, work ethic, I guess. Is that well, I think so, possibly. Yes, and and the first thing I do in the mornings, you see, is check the sheep because that's what we did. When when the when the livestock is your livelihood, you take care of it. So the first thing you do in the morning is go and sort the cows out and feed the animals and stuff, and you have breakfast later. So the first thing I do is just go and just check the sheep, which, I mean, it's not difficult, really. I've only got to look across the road and see if they're all three there. <laughs> but I suppose that's all part of 
what I grew up doing. Yeah, it, mm. it must have been, uh, in terms of raising your own family, do you feel that they've kind of missed out at all? On yes, they? yes, I do, yeah. Although we did have a bit of ground at the time, and so they had po they had a pony, so they had a bit of, and we used to have more hens when the children were small, so they did have a little bit of contact, and we had dogs and cats and stuff, you know, guinea pigs and rabbits and things. So they had quite a lot to do with animals, but not the farming experience. They hadn't got that, no.